Hello, 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 it's uh, Shads here with Pillars of Eternity. Now, I did actually record episode one of this a little while ago and uploaded it to YouTube, ready for release. However, something went wrong. Um, the video itself was fine, there's nothing wrong with the video. Um, however, my game save didn't save. So as you can see, I cannot continue. Pain. Pain, 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 pain. So, yeah, quite irritating. So, welcome to Pillars of Eternity, Episode 1, where we're going to start a new game. And um, we're going to do it on normal difficulty. And accept. So, I've been waiting for this game for a long time, and uh, I couldn't really do a lot of recording. Uh, I've turned the music off, by the way, because uh, I was a bit worried about uh, copyright issues. So I do apologise for lack of music. Please feel free to feel free to select some music of your choice and uh, put it on in the background if you so wish. But yeah, um, I've been looking forward to this for a long, long time, and I bought it on launch day, downloaded it, did the first episode, as I say. Then Easter came, and I had lots to do, sort of family stuff to do. So it kind of um, yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Okay. So uh, I'm going to select a male. I'm just going to basically whip through. Um, this is relatively simple. So I'm going to play an elf. And going to be a wood elf and it's going to be a druid and I quite like the idea spirit shift cat draws upon the druid's natural connection to the cat temporarily allowing him or her to assume that form cat spirit shift has naturally fast attack and can burst into even faster attack for short periods of time so it's either going to be that or it's going to be the wolf has an attack that can knock enemies prone. Mm, could be quite handy for the rest of the party to then jump onto that. What does the stag do? No, I don't know. Boar. No. We're going to go with... Cat. There we go. So, basically, these... Uh, if, if you've been watching my Baldur's Gate series, this is very similar. Um, but we don't have strength, we have might, we don't have... Uh, wisdom, we have perception, and so on and so forth. So, we're going to. These ones marked with a star show that these are prime requisites for, or certainly, you know, the attribute that is highly recommended for a druid. So, I'm gonna. Not too worried about strength that much, but intellect is. Um, will, defense, and influences, durations, and area of effect for abilities and talents. So that's quite um, important. Have that. Resolve is uh, good for concentration. Contributes to will and deflection, so we'll have that at about 14. Certainly have another point in constitution. Perception. 
resex defenses grants a bonus to interrupt, so we'll probably put one in there and whack another one in that one and another one in constitution. Good enough for me. Next, please. So culture, a deer. The Adir Empire is currently the largest and most powerful force in this part of the world. It's extra to resolve. No. Uh, Archipelago, dead fire. Mm, that gives you dexterity plus one. Kind of like the idea of um, planes. <laughs> Mainly human. Um, that's intellect plus one, which could be quite handy. Um, constitution plus one. Yeah. Might plus one. The white that wins. No. We're going to go for idea. So there we go. And it's going to be a not a clergy, not a mercenary, not a hunter, a drifter. There we go. Sorted. Right. So primary colour is going to be slightly darker green than that. Except. Secondary colour is going to be uh, probably a dark brown. Skin is going to be slightly paler. Hair is going to be Yeah, that's good enough. That looks pretty cool. Pretty happy with that as it is. I'm not gonna mess around with it. I will probably change the hair out though. Mm, nice. Oh yeah, look at that, cool. Want something long and straggly. So um, do do yeah, that'll do. Cool. And that's perfect. Next please. So a voice. Yes. Follow me. Attack! My eyes are peeled. Hmm? I shall lead us. Kill them all! Yeah, that's pretty savage. Steady does it. Hmm? Hmm. Leading the way! Time to see and not be seen. That'll do. And... We're going to... Call him Eris. Because I can. He doesn't have a surname. Because he's special. So, <laughs> there we go. So let's get cracking. So, new quest, the Gilded Vale. Journey to Gilded Vale. Ooh, look at these graphics. Lovely, lovely. Okay, Caravan Master finishes dressing the group, his bushy red moustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods. And beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight everybody stays put, and in the morning we'll get the path cleared. Gilded Vale's less than a day out. Understood? Okay. At last the caravan must attend to you frowning. As you Touch of the mouth. rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle round here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. Which case you'll be dead in a day. Charming. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. Right, okay. Where will they I They grow on a bush that's common round here, kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. 
Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. Okay. Your character, attribute, skill, class, race, and culture. Right, these are, like, tutorial messages, so... I'm not going to do too much with the tutorial. I just want to play it. I don't want to sit here talking about stuff and... Um... So let's hold on. The berries. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead. I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. Nice. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at, la at length on a sturdy armor clad woman who has spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without a blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, We'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. You heard the man. Let's get going before you keel over. So. Right, we know all about that. That's fine. Yep, okay. Right, let's get on. Yeah? So, we need to... Got it. Take a wander. Anyone need supplies? I've got sundries for sale. Okay, so we'll have a look and see what we got. So we've got a ring, which we'll wear. Don't know what it does. And a giant miniature space piglet that we got for pre-order in the game. Which, let's face it, everyone's got to have a giant miniature... Sp uh, a giant miniature? <laughs> yeah, a giant miniature space piglet. Everyone's got to have one of those. So, um, weapon-wise, we have a saber and a small shield. And some leather armor. She got. She's got a battle axe and a torch, scale armor. So she's doing a little bit better as far as as farm as far as the armor's going. So that's fine. So let's talk to this guy. See what he's got. See a man wearing single row, but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. <laughs> Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. Yeah, let's see what we've got. So, we... Has he got any better armor? Brigandine armor is 300 copper. How many copper have we got? Let's close that. We've got 100. Okay, so we're not going to be buying Brigandine armor. <laughs> um, right. The other armor's worth 300, but I bet we can't sell it for 300. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll leave it for now. Thanks, but no thanks. Let's go and find these berries. Can I zoom out? No, I can't zoom out any further. Right, okay. <laughs> ah, here's the sparkle. There we go. I'll have your water soon enough. Stream's not going anywhere. Okay, you arrogant knobs. We'll uh, carry on going. <laughs> Ooh, having some scrolling issues here. There we go. Let's check by those outcroppings. Outcroppings? What outcroppings? Oh, these outcroppings. A young wolf. Defense unknown. I suppose until you fight them, you don't know what they are. So, Pillars of Combat uses. Pausable real-time system, because you will often manage more than one character at a time. It's a good idea to pause the game, issue orders, as I do in Baldur's Gate, so that's fine. So, I think what we're going to do is just both attack. Okay, sometimes a weapon or spell simply isn't well suited to penetrating an enemy's damage reduction. 
when the attack hits, the DR will wipe out all but a small percentage of incoming damage. You'll hear your characters complain about that when it happens. Take heed, note your damage types. Okay. So let's scroll this up. It doesn't say that it's crap, so when a party member takes damage, they'll start to lose endurance now. Yeah, well, that's pretty obvious. <laughs> Low. Well, it's not low at all. That's a complete lie. But it's not as high as it was. He's been hit, basically. <laughs> That's fine, because he's dead. So we've got a glowy body. We can get a wolf pelt. That'll do nicely. Anything else? This is it. Aha! Springberry. Nice. kind of a mystery to the rest of the caravan, just some kind of wanderer, the way I hear it. Um, that sort of thing tends to happen with orphans. Mm. Was that, would I be an orphan? Mm. Sure, I wander out into the light. I wander into the lives of folks, talk them out of their money and wander back out. You have to be when people are looking for you, or that isn't your business. <coughs> um, we'll go with the orphan then. Yeah, how's it happened to come here? Burn down the orphanage and go out there while I could. I <laughs> never had a place to call home still, looking... I'm a self-made orphan, my parents got what they deserved, and now I'm leaving all that behind. <laughs> I think we'll go... Never had a place to call home. you got a lot on your mind then, hopefully things will work out in the end, but my experience, they don't always. Been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Rederick's offer. Makes a girl think, I'll give him that. Are you here to settle like the rest of us? No, I'm just passing through. That usually is the case with a big city, just a little ways further up the same road. Where are you headed? No special, just putting time and distance between me and my old life. I'm going to continue on to the city, see where that takes me. I'll probably wander for a while, somewhere I can make some money. I have no idea what I'm going to do next. Um, there we go. Seeing as we're halfway between nowhere and nothing, I'd say you picked the right spot. Anyway, I'm wasting time. Oh dear me, I'll give you a near fall. Let's be on our way. Why are you here? She sighs unevenly, her eyes searching the ground at her feet. My sister moved out here, some time back. She sent me a letter, she seemed worried, but that's how she always is. This time, though, she asked me to come out, and that's got me a little worried. I haven't seen her in ages, been doing uh, guide work in Ixamtil, but I'll do anything for her. She's, well, she's a much better woman than me, so I'm here, and we'll see. No demo worked for me before, she doesn't usually route, drive a route this way, but he's... He doesn't usually drive a route this way, but he's doing it for me. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's get back to camp. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath about Sparfields getting you water any time. He does what, a fella, what he feels like, when he feels like. You should check up on him first, slap him around a little. The stream's just that way. Go on, let's go get your water. That's not the plan. Alright, so we need to find a Sparfell. He was back that way, but we want to explore it at first. Okay, we can't go that way because the path. We shouldn't stray too far. The way we came, so. Is there anything up here? Ooh, more flowers. Burned lady. Okay. Right, so he was supposed to be coming down here, so we'll um, check this out. What a surprise. Sparful went hunt. This is recent. Not good. Okay, so Sparful isn't here. Bank and dip your water skin into the cool water while Kaliska. Kaliska? Kalisa. Kalisha? I can't even remember her name. What a doofus. Waits nearby, keeping watch. As you rise, you notice her look up sharply towards the tree line. Out of the trees, a marvelous sparkle of one of the guides, barely discernible in the dimness moonlight. He no longer carries his bow, and there is strangeness to his gait. A spastic wobble in his ordinarily deft strides as he moved towards you with David's breath. Sparful? Are you alright? 
Bartle's toe catches on a rock and he collapses forward in a heap of the shaft but an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. So the proverbial poop is about to hit the spinning thing. Ambush! Now do we split up or do we... Now he's got a club and a thing so I'm not sure. Does this guy carry a bow? I can't see. Can't really see, but what the hell? We we'll both attack. Let's go for it. Oh yeah, he's got a bow. Ah. All right, we'll it quick. Ah. Nice. Target destroyed. Lovely. Both spin round and get ah. out of this guy. Ah. 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 Two dead bodies. Come on, we have to get back to camp. Okay, so we got a bow, some hide armor, some copper. Sweet. That's pretty cool. Although I do think we do need to get back to. Uh... Okay. That was the thing about fatigue. Doesn't matter because we can. Finish the combat anyway, so that's fine. Ooh. The corpse is cold to the touch, and a ripe smell wafts from it in putrid waves. A dark, crusted, really bloodstained <laughs> besmirches its simple linen clothing. Oh, we have a body we can loot. And lockpicks. Nice. Okay. Go back this way. Let's find this Sarthal guy. Sparthal, Snarthal, whatever his name is. <laughs> uh oh. That doesn't look good. A hunter and another hunter. Now he's got a bow, so let's close in quickly on him. Oh, there's three of them. Shite, I didn't see that one. Um. Yeah? Can you reach them without getting an attack of opportunity? Yes, good. Alright. Kaliska's got a weapon in effective. Hmm. Nope, nope. Hmm? Just keep going. Ooh. Clobbered. Two slash damage. That's okay, we're okay. She seems to be hitting with a torch, which I don't think is probably a good idea. Um. Huh. Yeah, there's a lot of pausing, which is getting quite tedious. I think we'll stop the pause for weapon ineffective options. Where is it? Auto pause. Uh, there we go. It's not that it isn't actually doing any damage, it's just, you know, doing m small amounts of damage. And let's face it, we don't have any other weapons to choose from anyway, so. Uh, Hunter's yeah. dead. Let's get an attack from behind the skeezer. Okay, excellent. So both can attack him. He's near death. Come on, one more hit. And he's out of there. Sweet. No okay. problem. So let's loot the bodies, if I may. So we've got a couple of axes, a couple of shields. I'll just take the lot. can sell it. And this doesn't look good. All around you lie the massacred remains of the other travellers, peppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug-eyed and filthy on the blood-damp earth. Kalisha puts the back of her left hand to her mouth as if to ward away the horror like a poisonous vapour. 
Powerful of dark figures stand above the fallen, treading on limbs and backs and heads, jerking their axes from the bodies as if at half bonus as if from half split logs as they prepare to add you to the sprawling pile beneath them. One of them, towering and severe with a thick beard tasseled with knots, holds a wet blade at the neck of the man you recognise as Hiadan, the last of your caravan left standing. Lay down your arms, trespasser, do not forfeit this man's life for a fight you will lose. Mm. Murderers, you'll pay for each life. We have not trespassed. Be nice to use a bit of law. The ruin has not been sullied by our hands. Yeah, being a druid, you probably know a bit of the lore of the land, so there you go. Your words carry no weight. When have I... When... When, I, when I've seen the truth in my own eyes, blood must be paid for this intrusion. So I say again, lay down your arms. Well, we don't have might or perception. We have intellect. Um... Judging by the string of animal teeth around your neck, I'm guessing you are worshippers of Galloway. If Galloway told you to stop protecting the ruins, would you? The man frowns and motions as if to swing his axe. He had and winces, but the blow never comes. Instead, the man cocks his head intrigued. Of course, but he would not. It is by the command of all the gods that we accept this charge. How do you know? Because it's consistent with their beliefs, or because it's what you were told? The man glares. It's always been known to my people. I see. The model of Galloway's edict that weakness and age must be purged by youth and strength. You think the Galloway would want some mouldy, crumbling stones to survive long after their builders have turned to dust? He would not. He told us otherwise. I'm sure he did, just not you personally. But why should that stop you from killing innocents? Distracted, the man's grip falters on the axe handle. He nearly fumbles, affording Hirdem the moment he needs to dodge out of his swing, which comes too late. Howling with rage, the man charges you instead. probably do with getting rid of him first. Anybody with a bow? Yeah, he can How can I Hmm? supine on the ground, unable to rise. His companions are now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezing, fitful grasps. He looks not at you, but at the sky above. Forgive us. Early order beneath his choked sides, a whisper of wind stirs in the air. This is a man's eyes roll back and he closes them. Good, good, the gods are just. A smile crosses his face. I am ready. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upending pots and rustling tents like an angry spirit. You feel it begin to seep beneath your skin like a jetty beginning to succumb to the surge of a great wave, and where it pierces you it feels as it will rend you apart from within. Seated against a wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across the chest and bowel, a daemon's body stirs, and with great effort he rises his sagging head, his eyes barely open, he looks directly at you. Get inside! Run! Straying against the gale that threatens to pull you off your feet. With every step, you set your hands on the warm folds of the weathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. With the last burst of energy before your arms give out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. He then trails behind, slowed by injury and delayed by early hesitation. As he nears the face of the rocks, one of the falling attackers, who had been feigning death, lunges for Hirden and topples him onto the rocky ground. Restrained, he then lashes out against the fatigued assailant, but struggles to break his hold. They're close to you despite the wind from your position. If you were to throw your weapon at the attacker, you'd have a good chance of hitting your mark. Mm, yeah. Your aim is true and it jars Hiadan loose. Lurching to his feet, Hiadan clumps up over the base. As he nears the top, however, the wind flares, pulling him sideways and tearing one of his hands free. But diving onto the hard rock, you manage to catch hold of it. 
securing his other hand, you pull with a waning strength, and it feels as if your arm will be pulled from its sockets. Joked from its socket. <laughs> Even. I can't read. Uh, they hold just long enough for Hidden to set his feet and join you on the trembling ledge. There is a deep resonance to the swaying of the feels like rocks beneath your feet and inside the cavity of your own chest, as though it would shake or marrow from your bones. Each new gust menaces the old stones before you, loosening connections, unsettling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. Was that? A Beowick. Had to be. Then we're lucky to be alive. And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way, anyway. Let's get further inside. And there we have... the end of part one. Or the prologue, if you like. So that's a re-recording, basically, as I played it, pretty much, with the first recording that I did. So, um, yeah, I'm going to uh, end this uh, episode here, and I'll see you in the next episode, where we'll continue our travels through this strange, weird-looking building, or tunnel, whatever it is. So, uh, yeah, if you'd like to leave any tips, tricks, or comments, please do so. No spoilers, please. And, um, yeah please uh, hit the like button if you'd be so kind, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.